It's a very special show that we have this afternoon. Uh, we don't usually have guests at all on the show. Uh, I'm not saying this just because I'm trying to please you. Uh, you probably, I think, the fourth guest we've ever had since the show began. We've been on for over a year. Yeah. Uh, and we're joined by the one and only CIC Julius Malema in the studio. Thank you very much for coming through, Ganyan. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Good, good. And you? Not bad. Yeah, yeah. You know, when I invited you initially, I didn't realize that we'd have more to talk about than what I previously thought. Yeah. So, obviously, last week was very big for our country, or the last two weeks. Uh, and then this morning, we wake up, uh, you guys at a matter in court. Yes. Uh, you know how that went. Yes. Are you surprised with the outcome? Well, it is because uh, I think that uh, our courts should defend the uh, public interest mm. and should always be on the side of transparency. Mm. And that uh, when there is no crime being committed, even if it's a private matter, um, when you're a sitting president and your name is mentioned there, surely people should know uh, if uh, they are safe with you. Mm. Uh, the president holds a very big influence uh, and uh, those who finance him, he develops soft spot for them. Mm. And uh, in order to hold him accountable, you have to know who are these people that finance the president because you might find that they are the ones who are actually running the state now, but we are unable to pull uh, one and one together because we don't know who financed the president. So in case you're listening and you just joined us and you have no idea what we're speaking about, uh, the CR7, uh, CR17, I should say, yes. uh, bank statements, that matter was before uh, court, the high court, and it was dismissed with costs. Uh, and against how do you EFF. dismiss a matter of public interest with costs? You are using money to discourage people from taking the powerful <laughs> head on. You know, to dismiss it and say, well, you don't have a case. Since we're a political organization acting in the public interest, why do you impose money? You want to use money to suppress people from holding the powerful accountable because they do not have money. In most instances, we've been before courts. Courts have always said, we can't, we're lost. And then they say, we can't give costs uh, because we think these guys are here uh, for public interest. And uh, it was uh, extremely shocking. Mm -hmm. So that was the first matter. And uh, now this afternoon, something which the EFF had long called for, to be quite honest, uh, the postponement of the local elections. Uh, we see now that there's a recommendation uh, by Mosinega that indeed that should happen. Well, Does that uh, come as a surprise to you? No, not at all. I mean, uh, remember uh, former Deputy Chief Justice, as a Chief Justice we never had. Mm. It's a man of rationality. It's a very sober man uh, and always applies his mind to issues. And Mosenega, even when he dismisses you, he gives proper uh, logical explanations as to why he arrived at the decision he arrived at. So we always knew that uh, they have appointed the right person and he will do uh, justice to, to this matter. Um, many South Africans uh, like coming late to the party and not, uh, you know, uh, theoretically, even practically. I mean, if you say you have a party at Ennis Free Park, uh, starting at 2, they're going to arrive at 9 in, in the evening. So we're not shocked that many people are now going to come to the party because the EFF always says these things way in advance. Is, this, they a, come later. is this a superior logic? You Absolutely. always boast. That's the superior <laughs> logic of the EFF. Even on this uh, 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 CR17 we, sp we spoke about much earlier, we can't retreat now. Uh, we'll be dismissed. We'll still go to constitutional court. If we get dismissed, it's fine. But ultimately, people will realize with time as to what is it that the EFF was talking about. This Zuma they don't want today, uh, when we held him accountable, we were called all sorts of names. We were called anarchists, disruptors, uh, illiterate, and all types of manner of things in parliament and everywhere else on the streets. And today, they've joined us and they've even gone beyond us. They now wish him dead which is not what the EFF wishes for him. So what is it that you're hoping will then be uh, present in these bank statements that you haven't already seen? Because these bank statements did leak no. two and a half years ago. No, 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 no. The judge says in his judgment, there are certain documents that are sealed there which have not been revealed to anyone <clears throat> till to date. And those are very important matters which must remain private.
to see exactly those important matters that must remain private. Remember, uh, judges are implicated. Uh, remember, politicians are implicated. Business people are implicated. The only way you can settle it is by revealing uh, those papers. Then we know that these judges are judging us based on law, not on uh, being pre uh, uh, bought by uh, whoever uh, might have given judges money uh, before. The Chief Justice spoke about this before, that uh, you can't have judges that you know when they hear this matter and there is so-and-so appearing before these judges, you already know where the direction uh, this judgment will take. So it's unfortunate. So the only way you can settle this and to close the mouth of information peddlers and, and rumor mongers reveal the documents. The president himself uh, got elected under the ban of transparency. He should be actually be an applicant with the EFF demanding that the CR-17 documents must be uh, 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 released so that people can know what, uh, what is contained in those documents. Look, the president has spoken about him not having known who the donors are to his campaign to begin with. He wasn't in charge of those funds. And at the risk of bringing him into this, because, I mean, if I want to speak to the president, I should yeah, have called yeah. the president in here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what then do you think you can hold against him personally, even if it were to be found that somebody else did donate there? There's a rumor that he wrote emails that uh, were sent to the donors thanking them. Uh, only when we reveal those uh, documents will we know that indeed the president didn't know because they say he thanked them. But I know the president knew because... He gave two EFF members of parliament money. And when I confronted him about it in parliament, he said, they approached me, they had a problem, they had a difficulty, and I had to help. And where did the money come from? It came from CR-17. So how can you help people with money that you don't know it exists or it comes from where? But he's got money of his own. (laughs) Yeah, he's got his own money, but that one comes specifically from CR-17. Because when these uh, uh, documents were being leaked one by one, their names were found in the CR-17 uh, bank statements, not in Cyril Ramaphosa's bank statement or a Ramaphosa Foundation statement. No, it was CR-17 bank statement. He's confirmed in Parliament. He's there in, on, on, on record uh, where he says, they called me for help and I helped them. He didn't know where the money must have come from, but surely, you know, if you're running a campaign, look, we've got maybe, I don't know, a war chest of this much now. You've run campaigns before. Yes. You've never lost a, a, a conference, as you always say. Yes. So you do know what kind of numbers you're working with. And I know where the money comes from. Mm. I don't just know. I'm not going to use uh, blood money. What if I'm being fed blood money? Are you saying our president so naive to a point that he doesn't care that his fi- campaign is financed with blood diamonds? A caring president will know. Hold that thought. We're going to go to traffic and then we'll come back just on that point exactly. Welcome back to Car Drive. Just joined us. It is 24 minutes past three. A very different kind of show that we're having this afternoon. A lot more talk and less music. But it's for a good reason. Because we're joined by uh, Julius Malema in studio. Uh, We don't usually have guests. But, you know, we took the opportune moments just to invite you over based on everything that's been happening in the country. And before we took sports, uh, sorry, we took uh, the traffic and the ad break, you were speaking about how source of funds, especially in a campaign, is really, really important. Yes. And I don't really like to cover ground that's been covered before, or even ask a question that's been answered and, uh, and asked in the past. Uh, but you remember the issue regarding how the EFF was formed and how the initial funds came about. Yeah. Uh, and do you remember what your defense was in that and then later, you made an admission that, look, those funds did come from such and such a person. Uh, and at the time, we didn't know the source of the funds. Do you no, remember? No, 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 no. Um, remember, they needed 650 from us. Mm. We managed to raise all of that money. 200,000 comes from Adriano Mazzotti. Mm. We always knew it came from him. And we have never denied it. Uh, we said, um, we are not involved in Mazzotti's businesses. We don't know what... Mazot is up to, but uh, we know where the money came from and we accepted it with a clear conscience. Uh, so it's not the same thing here to say we didn't know. We knew and we knew the person uh, involved. But it is the same thing because before we went to that break, you literally used the words 
blood money, right? Money, as, as, money as, is as, not as, blood money. No, wait. As an example, right? Yes. Those, that was your wording. Yes. Now, if the reports are to be believed, Adriano Mazzotti is a guy who is involved in illicit cigarette trading in South Africa. Yes. Right? Which is illegal. Yes. Uh, which is a black market activity which can be linked to organized crime. Yes. Which can then be referred to as blood money in itself. Do you know that Adriano Mazzotti has never been investigated or charged for any crime since he has been in existence? This I'm aware of. So, so, so you can't just look at a person here and through uh, smearing campaigns by the competitors conclude that this guy is a, a hardcore criminal. A guy like that, when you know that he's engaged in illicit and all manner of things, Surely, uh, some intelligence work should have been done to hold him accountable. He has been in business. I may actually met him in the ANC. Uh, he was a member of the ANC uh, when I met him. Uh, and I introduced him from, uh, from the ANC to the EFF. So, if there's such information about a person, why not uh, law enforcement play its role and hold him accountable? Uh, uh, so, you cannot just on the basis of smear uh, then take a conclusion. All I'm saying is that the president should have or ought to have reasonably known who the funders are. Mm. And to say the president doesn't know, it is entirely incorrect because there's no way he will accept money that he doesn't know where it comes from unless okay. he doesn't care. So that's why I would know that part of the money comes from Mazoti, and I will know who Mazoti is, and I will accept that money with clear conscience that okay. this is who we are. And had we not accepted Mazoti's money, by the way, there wouldn't be EFF and, EFF, that and you wouldn't have made it. Yeah. Elections because no establishment was going to uh, was ready to donate money uh, to the EFF. Um, uh, um, the decision by the court was made on the eve of the closure of registration. It's very interesting because I don't know if you remember this, but I was actually there uh, with you guys during the early days of the EFF and formation. Yeah. It was at the time where anybody who was affiliated with the SAPC was not allowed to interview you guys. Yes. yes. Uh, you weren't allowed to get any kind yes. of airtime. I yes. think, so before you actually launched the party in Marikana, yeah. which was in October, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, you no, had a soft exactly. launch. Yeah. We had a soft launch of the party, which was round about in July. Mm -hmm. And before then, you weren't even calling yourself a party. You were calling yourself a protest movement. Yes. Uh, and I remember sitting there watching you uh, read what was a partially formed manifesto. I thought, these guys are mad. Yeah. What are they talking about? Yeah. But I just left the SABC, I think a year prior, and I took it upon myself to try and do something leading up to the elections. And we organized an interview with you. Mm. Uh, you didn't have offices at the time. We had the interview downtown. And you spoke about what it was that you were trying to form. Uh, and you spoke about how the ANC had made your life very difficult. Mm. Uh, the phrase they used to like to use back then was this cold outside the ANC. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. You survived the cold. Mm. Uh, okay, since then, things have changed dramatically. Uh, I would say the funds have started flowing in. Mm -hmm. uh, and you became a fully fledged party, but there were all these allegations about who it was that helped you set up the party and the funds that came from the UK, so to speak. Right? Mm -hmm. What do you say about those allegations? <laughs> I mean, uh, <laughs> you know that uh, the state doesn't like us. Mm. We are not very good friends of the state, including the white establishment. So, any manner of uh, illicit activities coming from our side. They will be exposed even before we know about them ourselves. Till to date, there's no one who has ever come forward with a proof that there was any money from UK. No one. Uh, Mkletama and his people were disgruntled about uh, not getting positions in the EFF, started peddling that money came from uh, UK. I, I, and, and actually, they are the ones who received money from state security under Matlobo. Um, some monies came from state security to destabilize and destroy the EFF. 10 million was set aside on Project EFF. I'm shocked because those revelations were made and these people were supposed to appear before the Zondo Commission uh, to speak about why did they get the money. So 
You did, however, have trips to the UK. Uh, I remember there was one instance we're, where we're, you were speaking we're, to we're students. In, we're um, introducing the organization internationally. Mm. You can't uh, form a political party in South Africa and not want to go and speak to the potential investors of South Africa in your former colony country mm. because your economies are aligned. Uh, so you can't uh, want to be a serious factor and not go uh, to uh, the UK and not go to America uh, to go and sell yourself so that people don't go and speak about you and on your behalf without you going to speak about yourself and telling people, who are you? What do you stand for? Mm. Uh, and, and that's what we did. We met a lot of uh, <laughs> investors, including uh, Stephen Koshev, by the way. Uh, and I, I had a, a heated debate with him uh, uh, in a meeting. Uh, he was saying to me, I need to tone down. I said, that's what Minel family and Oppenheimer told Mandela when they used to spend time with him, and it's not going to happen with me. So we met the captains of industry. We meet people who disagree with us. Why do you want to spend time talking to yourself? You ought to persuade other people to buy into your ideas. And those trips were for that purpose. Who took out the pictures? It's us. Who announced the meeting publicly? It's us. There's no secret meeting that took place when we were there. It was me, Dali, Mwiseni, and uh, Floyd, I think. So there was no secret meeting, and we're using public transport. We didn't have limousine or anything <laughs> of, that, of that sort. We're using... Uh, make what we call makes the taxis here. Yeah, sometimes we'll hire a kumbi, and then we get into a kumbi. We we'll get taken to different areas to meet even uh, our uh, African brothers in the diaspora. In studio, we have got the one and only CIC, Mr. Julius Malema. Um, we've got a tweet here from Lunga Slick. Um, Lunga Palmer saying, please ask Julius Malema what he thinks about people calling him inconsistent. I was going to save that for later, but ah, we can get into it now. Inconsistent with what? Because so they call you a flip flopper. They say your views change. Okay, but Cyril Ramaphosa said the problem there in uh, KZN and here in Gauteng was ethnic, mm -hmm. and the following day he said no, it's not ethnic. So the politics I pursue, if you go to my courses days mm -hmm. until now, they've been very consistent. Um, I stand for left politics. I stand for free education, land for our people. I said all of this, even when we were burying uh, the former president or the founding president of Cossas, uh, Ephraim Mohale, I was very young. Uh, I spoke about these things I'm speaking about now. Um, uh, so given those titles by those who disagree with us to delegitimize us, mm. so that uh, as in when we make an input, uh, people do not listen to us because an impression has been created that you can change the following day. We never changed on principle from when we were young until now. Uh, so I don't think there's anything, I mean, on I changed on what? I mean, um, 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 I've held President Zuma accountable, for instance. And I said uh, the highest punishment you can give to a sitting president is by making sure they don't finish their term. It hurts them to the grave. President Mbeki till today, he, he will never recover from that. You did, however, utter the words, we want to see Zuma in jail. Yes, because we want to hold him accountable. Mm. Yes. And, and then when the sentence was handed down, albeit for something totally different, yeah, yeah. right, two weeks ago, yeah. you then said, look, he's an old man. Yeah. He doesn't deserve to be in jail. No, but you can have Zuma in jail, not necessarily in the cells. You can give him house arrest. Mm. You can have him at home. That is still a sentence on its own. That is still a punishment on its own. Because ours is a correctional service. What do you want to correct with an eight-year-old? Because we correct you and reintegrate you back to society to make a contribution. That's why we spend money on you. So to spend money on an eight-year-old is a wasteful expenditure. You won't come back and be useful anyhow. So uh, you, you can have him arrested, uh, but place him under house arrest. You still get the same results. So I want Zuma accountable. I want Zuma uh, uh, held uh, accountable. I'm the one. I, I fought with him when it was not fashionable. All of these ones who are going after him are peacetime heroes. who are very scared of him, by the way, who defended him. Hold on here before we get into that one, because now we're going to get into serious issues. Uh, more talk than music. And that's because we joined in studio by our guest, Julius Malema.
uh, the CIC of the EFF. So, before we went to traffic and took the break, yes, you were getting into the issue of holding former President Zuma accountable. Maybe let's backtrack a little bit, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, because I want to set the scene here. You recently turned 40. And by the time people turn 40, they have got at least three instances, right, that have defined them, uh, changed their trajectory in life, or then confirmed that they're headed in the right direction. For you, can you tell me what were those instances in your life? I don't know, because uh, I think anything in politics is mm. not uh, a mistake. Mm. Um, it is deliberate, it is planned, and uh, uh, its outcomes are, in most cases, predetermined. So in you this way then, yeah. right? Because just your personal life, not necessarily uh, politics, oh, okay. right? Okay. You grew up in a household with your mom and your grandmother. Yes. You often speak very highly of former NC Youth League President Peter Mokaba. Yes. You call yourself the kid of Peter Mokaba, yeah. right? Yeah. That's the one person that I could then assume that was a role model to your male father figure, right? Mm-hmm. Tell me if I'm wrong. You know, you're right. You're right. You then speak very highly of Jacob Zuma. I remember having a conversation with you and you were saying, at the time where he got fired as deputy president, you were helping him pack plates at his house, but he didn't know where to go because he had no house. Yes. Do you remember the conversation? Yes. Uh, this was at a time where you'd utter words like, we will kill for Jacob Zuma. That's how close you were to him. Yes. Also, I, I would assume somewhat of a father figure or maybe at least a mentor of some sort, mm-hmm. right? No, 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 no. Not a mentor. We supported uh, uh, President Zuma. Um, and uh, when we said we'll kill for him, it was uh, a demonstration of commitment to the cause mm. uh, that uh, come what may, uh, we're, come, we're going to come out of this situation victorious. Mm. So we used those words as a, a way of demonstrating how committed are we uh, to that cause. And we won it. Uh, 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 uh. So I, I, was, I was never close to President Zuma, by the way. You know, the first time I went to Uganda is when I went to FT now. I've never been to Ngandla. I've been to... Uh, Ngandla, for, I can understand, uh, because by the, by the time Ngandla was built, your relationship had deteriorated. No, remember, during our term mm. as the youth league, he used to throw parties there every end of the year. Uh, and we took a conscious decision, myself and Mbalula, that we shouldn't go there and be seen to be part of the plates and furniture of President Zuma because we, we are not that. We, we were supporting him. Uh, for particular reasons, and that mission has been accomplished. So I've been to his house in Forest Town uh, during the rape trial, uh, only, I think, twice or so. Mm. I've never, I've, I, and I, I, I never had uh, President Zuma's cell phone number, and I've never spoken to him on the cell phone. Uh, but I've got Cyril's number, and I speak to Cyril on the phone. So actually, if you we were to compare the relations I had with Zuma and Cyril, I'm more closer to Cyril than I am to President Zuma. Okay. Uh, we, we, we can have a, a, a chilled discussion with Cyril any time uh, and disagree, but uh, we've got that type of a relationship. So I'm saying I don't have a relationship I, I have with President Ramaphos, uh, with President Zuma, till now. Uh, and then a part of the reason why I ended up leaving office again is because... You guys started a campaign, which has paid back the told, money. We told him that we, we, told him that we made brought you. Brought the issue of the Guptas into the we fore. We told him that we made you mm. and we'll remove you. Mm. Uh, because when he became president, he then uh, had new friends. If we were to go to Zuma circle now and check who was there when Zuma got fired as a deputy president and who, who was there when he became president and who was who's there now, it's completely different people. The mm. people who were with him when he was a president uh, and, 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 and defending him are the ones who are shouting the loudest and insulting him the loudest today. And they're the ones who want to see him dead. Uh, uh, so uh, 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 it was a matter of principle. We said to President Zuma, you're going to be president for one term. And then we went to him and said, uh, the term is coming to an end. Uh, we think Halima must be president because we agreed with you on one term. And he said, hell no, it's not going to happen. And that's how we became enemies. 
And so at the time where you guys in, in well, you specifically ended up getting expelled from uh, the ANC. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think everybody else was just merely suspended, but then yes. Floyd chose to go with yes. you. Yes. So at the time where that happened, mm-hmm. you were still fighting to remain in the ANC. Yes. Uh, in fact, your words was, were, look, this is a party that is not owned by any one individual. Uh, maybe they can strip us of leadership uh, positions, the ANC, but in terms of being members, we can remain that, right? Yes. Uh, that obviously then changed once you started your own movement, which then later became a political party and you contested power and you guys got into parliament. So then the question becomes, if somebody were to say right now, the position that we're in, even President Cyril Ramaphosa ended up in office largely due to your efforts, would you agree with that or disagree with that? Well, uh, I don't think President Ramaphosa had anything to do with his uh, becoming president of the ANC or the country. My desire to remain in the ANC at the time was inspired by the fact that it was the only organization that had a potential to pursue the struggle for the total emancipation of our people, Mm. which will mean economic freedom in our lifetime. Mm. There was no alternative. And um, to ditch the ANC would be to ditch the agenda of economic freedom in our lifetime. And that's why we emphasize that even if you want to take any drastic action, remove us from positions, suspend us for many years, uh, not to occupy any position in the movement, let us remain, just support us. Because we wanted to pursue, for us it was not positions, we wanted to pursue the agenda for economic freedom in our lifetime. Myself, Masondo, Floyd, had a discussion in my house that... Since there is this development, um, we need an alternative platform to agitate for economic freedom in our lifetime. And we looked at three scenarios. Should we form a political party? Uh, should we form a, a, a non-governmental organization? Uh, should we form a, a non-partisan type of a platform where we'll engage and all of that? And uh, when we went on with the discussion, Masondo was no longer there. uh, And we took a decision, myself and Floyd, that you know what? This platform we're fighting for is no longer available for this type of struggle we're pursuing. We need to create something fresh, something new. And then we need to continue with the same agenda that we've been pursuing within the ANC. That's how the EFF was born. So the argument, even internally in the ANC, was that Take the positions, take everything, leave us as members because we knew we'll fight from the ground for what we stand for. But you, understanding politics the way that you do, and I know you do, it's not something we can sit here and debate, you understand that there's three types of leaders, right? Mm-hmm. So there will be a charismatic leader, mm-hmm. somebody that people gravitate towards, and that person may or may not be good. That's mm-hmm. besides the point. Yes. President Zuma was one such. Yeah. You are another, for example. Yeah. Pastor Bushiri is another, yeah. right? And then you get people that are governors. Don't necessarily have a following per se, but they can govern, yeah. right? I'd argue that maybe Cyril Ramaphosa is one of those people. I could, nah, I can't. Well, we'll get to whether or not you agree, right? Mm. Uh, and you can maybe look at, I don't know, former governor, Tito Mboeni, for example, is somebody who can govern, but doesn't necessarily have any kind of charisma to rally people around. No, President right? Mbegi. Yes, yeah, yeah, that could be true. Yeah. That could be true. Yeah. Uh, and then you understand that within that, you then also have the third bit, which is a politician. Mm-hmm. Somebody who can tactically play uh, in that space. And sometimes it can be one person with two of those traits. Very, very seldom do you get all three of those traits in one person. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. You knew this, you understood this, and you knew that even within forming the EFF, you had the charisma. And then with Floyd by your side, who then you can call maybe the governance side mm-hmm. or, 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 or of it, mm-hmm. you had somewhat of a, a Fidel Castro and Shea kind of <laughs> partnership, right? Mm-hmm. I'm here to then pose to you and say that without the noise that the EFF had then started within the ANC, President Zuma Raposo would have faced a very difficult time amassing any kind of position in the ANC. Even though he may have been the right person, right? Mm -hmm. The fact that you guys collapsed what was essentially the nucleus of the NC, and there's no doubt that you guys did that, Mm -hmm. it then gave him a fighting chance to go in there and emerge victorious. No, you know, Cyril was was handpicked by Zuma. 
and made him deputy president. Yes, because but that didn't necessarily mean that the guy was going to end up being president. That, that's how the, the history teaches us, that they all become uh, president, mm. deputy president, become president. Um, um, uh, uh, he went to fetch him, uh, and then uh, we have what we have now. Uh, president Mbeki went to fetch Zuma. We have what we have now. So um, it has always been like that. But I, I agree with you that if we had a, a strong a youth league uh, in the ANC, which is what led to our expulsion, President Zuma would not have been president in Mangaum for second term. Mm. He knew that. And he made that calculation that, you know what, if we don't get rid of these people, we are not going to win that conference. And uh, Khalema would have been president if we were not expelled. A lot of people supported Khalema. They lacked the necessary courage. And remember, for you to take on a head of state, you have to have courage. People just need someone who's got courage to take on, on the powerful. Then they will come. Uh, but even if they didn't want Zuma, they were all scared. And then they ended up surrendering and then allowing him for a second term. So uh, 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 the youth league destruction was for the purpose of second term. And at the center of the planning of the destroying of the youth league was Gwede Mantash working with Zuma because we said Mbalula must be the SG and then Khalema must be uh, the president. And Gwede knew that he was, was not going to make it. Went to mobilize Zuma and said, no, actually I'm the gate to you. They want to get through me in order to remove you. And um, uh, he was right because we didn't want Zuma to go for the second term, but we didn't have to go through Gwed. We went through Zuma himself. We told him on his face about it. Now, when you guys eventually do become the opposition, right? Uh, fastest growing party over the last two elections. I'm talking local and general. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no dispute there. And I think you can see you yourself use the words, this thing is, is moving nicely, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. If somebody were to say, okay, the events of the last... 15 months in the country have left a gaping hole and perhaps a chance for you as an EFF to demonstrate now this leadership that you've been speaking about. Would you be willing to take that? Yeah, but you don't say that verbally. You do it through a cross. They have to vote for the EFF to mm. be in power. That's why when there were gymnastics in the past two weeks or so, we stayed back. Let those who are elected deal with it. They've got more confidence on them. Let them deal with it. Uh, it is not our issue. It is a partisan issue, and we shouldn't be dragged into it. Uh, so we refused to to come in there. But then, as an observer, if I were to say, for me, it always seems like, especially in South Africa, that opposition parties are happy being opposition, but not necessarily happy to govern. No, we want to govern. We are not scared to govern, and we'll govern effectively, and we'll govern in a very uh, responsible manner. We are not scared to take decisions. We're not scared to take risk. I mean, since where we are now, everything was about taking risk. Um, and, and we are known for that. So uh, if given an opportunity, we'll govern. We had a discussion with the ANC, by the way, um, the, some few months ago about them taking Joe back and then voting with us to give us 20. Uh, because we wanted to demonstrate that we can govern. Uh, uh, we are not just charismatic leaders. We are leading a solid organization with a clear direction now eight years without relying on any veteran, without relying on any memory, relying on our ability to govern. We've got more than 1,000 um, uh, public representatives. There are so many people who, if you so wish, they can just defy you any day they want. They can just de run a destructive program to destroy the organization. It hasn't been the case with the EFF. Why? We can govern. We are that type of leadership which can govern and run its own affairs in an orderly manner. Uh, so, what but then let's take a look at history and what it shows yes. us, right? Yes. Uh, you mentioned, for example, talks with the ANC yes. uh, regarding to some kind of a coalition or at least a trade-off where yeah, you can no, take no, this. They govern. There. Yeah, we and then you can take. Coalition. Yeah. We vote for them in Jobek. They govern alone. Mm -hmm. We remain in opposition, opposing them. Then we govern in Swani. Mm -hmm. They vote for us to govern in Swani. They sit in the opposition opposing us so that we can demonstrate ourselves on our own what we can do uh, as a political party. 
and they re they refuse that. I mean, I, initially they agreed, uh, 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 and Paul Mashadile was leading such a discussion. And then when we went to Tswane, we were told that some what councillors of the ANC are refusing, which was a clear demonstration of a centre not holding. Okay. On their part. But then let's speak about the coalitions that you had formed in the past, right? Mm. Because you did get into bed with the DA. No ways. You did? No, we never formed a coalition. We removed the ANC uh, with a hope that when they lose metros, that will humble them mm. and their arrogance will be dealt with uh, and they will come back to the table and want to engage in a reasonable manner. But the ANC being ANC, even after losing metros, the arrogance continued to grow and grow. When we said to the ANC, by the way, uh, interestingly, um, we're going to give you all the metros. We're not going to get involved on condition you remove Zuma. They all defended Zuma. Was it a tribal issue when they defended Zuma? Now they've reached a ceiling. They can't think they say it's tribal. They've always supported Zuma. Support for Zuma didn't start in KwaZulu Natal. It has always been there. They all did support him. Uh, and it has not been tribal. So but be that one as it of may, the, the options we gave them that time was that remove Zuma, we give you metros. They refused. But be that as it may, here you are back in talks with the ANC and actually at Logger has the DA. You even saw as the EFF that you'd never strike any kind of deal that you struck in the past with the DA. You know, coalition politics is exactly what they are. Mm -hmm. When there is no outright winner, you are going to find yourself going to from, to from, to from, looking at what is the best deal, not only for you, but for the people in the city. So coalitions are going to be there. Our next uh, a decade or so, and the most unfortunate thing is that in Gauteng, it will even lead to the province, by the way, mm. uh, where there will be a coalition. The reality is that we are going to have to kiss frogs in a, on our way to power. That's what coalition does. But a naive person who has got no clear clarity of what politics are and uh, what coalition politics are in particular will think that you are inconsistent. Coalition means permanent give and take.